What you're looking at here today is a clock that I've invented. I've named it the Great Pyramid Atlantis Two-Second Clock. I invented this clock here in Klagenfurt, Austria uh, during the year of 2020, but I'd been working on another model prior to that for a year or so. I'm not going to get into all the math of how this works. What I will say, the math proves that it does work. And the math that's built in this clock has been derived from uh, teachings of the mathematician Randall Carlson. I've used his math uh, to create this, plus other sources too. And I have some of my own small discoveries built into this as well. I'm going to try and attempt to explain a few points here. So I'll show you what the, is going to happen. Um, mind you, this is not a finished product. I'm moving ahead of myself a little bit by showing this today. But I, I think it's time to just address what's going on here. It's a very intense study of mine. And I'll just move over a bit and uh, show you what's going on here. This is this would be the northern hemisphere of planet Earth. Once it's finished, there will be maybe some maps and other details to so you can identify with it a little bit better. Um, inside here, we have the Great Pyramid of Giza. And of course, it's not finished either. Um, to pull too many apart. Sometimes it's a little hard to get back together. This is the perimeter of the base of the Great Pyramid, and that's the um, distance around here. This is a perimeter. Then the height is here, and that's the distance in here, the height. Um, those numbers can give us, for a starter, the um, radius of planet Earth very accurate numbers and the circumference of the Earth at the equator based on the mathematics built in the Great Pyramid of Giza. This hand here will eventually move up and down. I'll have some devices so I can move it. This represents the height of the Great Pyramid of Giza. And um, with the height, we can determine various measurements, as were mentioned, and many more. This down here is the, um, the two seconds that take place at the equator. Um, up here is uh, the size of the moon, the radius and the diameter can be determined with this clock. Um, also the radius and, and um, The diameter of planet Earth can be determined with this clock, and also the radius and the di diameter of the Sun can be determined by this clock. Now I've just moved things around a bit. I'm just going to make sure we're still in alignment properly, so I can explain some of these details to you. Uh, yeah, we're doing pretty good. So. This hand, if we take the height of the Great Pyramid of Giza, and be this one here, the height by 42,000 or 43,200 seconds in a 12 hour day, multiply that, we get the radius off the Earth 3,949 miles, 0.834 miles. And uh, this can be determined by the seconds and a half a day and the height of the Great Pyramid. We get the radius of planet Earth. To get the circumference of planet Earth, we need to multiply the perimeter, this here around part of the Great Pyramid, that size, with the um, height of the Great Pyramid of Giza. And then it gives us the distance around planet Earth over here, 24,734 miles. So it's almost identical with the modern day measurements of the circumference, circumference of the Earth and the radius. If we were to turn this whole thing up, this would be the northern hemisphere. If we turned it upside down, made another one, stuck it on the bottom, we'd have the southern hemisphere. And we work out the same measurements the same way. 
this here can uh, determine uh, the radius of the moon, planet Earth, and the sun, and the diameter. This all moves for various reasons that I'll explain in future videos, but a little too complex and too detailed to go into today. This little thing here represents two seconds of time at the equator, this little dial. If you were to measure the perimeter of the Great Pyramid of Giza, this here, this is the perimeter, once again, this round section, um, each side of the pyramid represents the movement of planet Earth at the equator by a half a second. So to go around the whole of the Great Pyramid of Giza at the perimeter, planet Earth moves that exact same distance in two seconds of time. So two seconds would be like one, two. And um, because of that, somehow, the ancient people had an incredible knowledge of the size of planet Earth, the radius from pole to pole, and the circumference of planet Earth around the equator. And this two seconds of time, they were able to construct the Great Pyramid so that the, around the circumference, the um, measurement of the movement of planet Earth could be determined. So here we go, the Great Pyramid of Giza. I'm not going to take it all apart. Eventually, I'm going to have some working um, apparatus to move these things around instead of moving them by my hand. I will give a greater explanation of the mathematics as time goes on. I've named it with the initials GPS2. And uh, it's interesting where the Great Pyramid of Giza is located. The latitude is identical with the numbers of the speed of light, as I mentioned down here. Which you'll not like to be able to see on the camera. Uh, there's just an endless amount of information, mathematical information, that's built into this clock that it's hard for the average person to comprehend the bigger picture of what this is all about. But what I do know, as mentioned earlier, it does work, the math is there, and there's nothing I can do about it. There's 144 teeth here, and 72 here. These numbers have been known for ages by the ancient peoples of various civilizations in Greece and Rome and what have you. Um, how they're able to figure these things out is a question mark in itself, but the math proves that someone knew what they were doing when they built the Great Pyramid of Giza uh, by the height and by the perimeter of the base and the sockle, which gives us the size of the northern hemisphere of planet Earth. And if we were to turn this upside down and glue it, another one on top, we'd have the southern hemisphere and the northern hemisphere. And here's the clock on the inside. This serves a purpose for being in there. But once again, I'll have to explain it to you another time. This comes off that wheel. I'll have another clock in here and another one here. And then there'll be other features that aren't on here presently. So I'm just going to leave it at that for now. Um, I just want to give you a demonstration of how this basically works and then I'm going to um, improve this and make a few more videos as we go along and explain one detail at a time because it's so complex to do that here today to try to explain to you the two seconds in time of the movement at the equator, the distance around planet Earth based on the Great Pyramid of Giza and the radius of planet Earth based on the height of the Great Pyramid of Giza, the size of the moon, uh, planet Earth and the sun is all in here, the radius and the diameter of each of these and then we have the eclipses of the moon and solar eclipse of the moon and then we have the solar eclipse of the or the lunar eclipse of the moon. And then there's other things built in around here. So I'll leave you with those thoughts for now. Thanks for your patience because it's not that easy to give this first demonstration. 
but that's what you have and it will be explained once again in greater detail as the days, weeks, and months move along. Thank you.